everyone, and welcome to the Survivor Savant Podcast. My name is Nathan Newport. I am the self-proclaimed Survivor Savant himself. Today, we are going to be talking about Survivor Africa Episode 4. And just to give you guys an update, in case you don't know right about now, um, from now on, I will no longer be doing one uh, podcast episode on the weekend, describing three episodes. I am, from now on, going to be doing one episode on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, so that way I can still do the three episode episodes that I normally do a week, but I will have them split off so that way it's not going to be too much, you know? So that's how it's going to be, and with that said, let's get into today's uh, podcast. So we are on Survivor Africa episode four, um, where it's called The Young and Untrusted, I believe where after the one vote out from uh, the last episode's tribal council with Carl, uh, where it was a tie between Carl and Lindsay, and then another tie, he, which ended up in a deadlock, Carl and Lindsay had to uh, answer trivia based on the Bush survival guide. And after one of them get incorrectly guessed false, which was Carl, uh, Carl was then the third person to be voted out from Survivor Africa, which is unfortunate. Uh, so the Samburu tribe are now oh, down to seven members. And uh, the older people of the Samburu tribe are down to three members with Frank, T- T-Bird, and Linda. And you got the four younger people still intact with Silas, Brandon, Lindsay, and KP, a.k.a. Kim Powers. Um... I'm not gonna lie, I feel bad for the old for the crowd. You know, they've been doing nothing but trying to survive out here and doing it right. Meanwhile, you got the younger crowd uh, doing nothing but sitting around and sleeping in and laying, eating the burnt bits of the breakfast behind for them to eat while they get all the best pickings, which is so unfair. But, uh,. You know, the younger crowd are still celebrating about the fact that they have the majority now and they're just going to go ahead and vote out whoever they you see he fits their uh, their little, little club. Like, let me restart. They, want, they now have the majority. They get to vote out who they don't want to have around anymore and basically have the camp, whole camp to themselves. Um, and not going to lie... If I was in the lesser majority, I would definitely feel really bad about that. I mean, now, looking back then now, knowing that you're in the minority and you're at risk of being going home, you're not going to be able to save yourself if you go to a tribal council. The only hopes you have now in the current era of Survivor is if you can find an advantage or immunity idol. At least that could be your saving grace, but... Back then, they didn't have that. The only thing they can depend on is if they win an immunity challenge. So that way they don't have to go to tribal council. But no, they don't have that. Um, so Silas is, in fact, act pleased with this. And he is happy to have the majority now. And he hopes to keep going with this game. And hopefully he sees them out as the uh, winner in the end. Pfft. Freaking arrogant already. Meanwhile, Lindsay, the one who ended up getting votes out of the younger crowd, is really upset by this. And she really, he lets the older crowd know about this and even curses at them and tells them, you do not, I don't want to mess with me. Once I'm amped up, you do not want to mess with me. And I'm like, this coming from a girl who who gave it her all in the one SOS challenge, the distress signal challenge, and because she didn't exert her energy any well or preserve it well enough, she sat down or lie down on the floor crying because she was in so much pain. I'm like, who are you to like, I don't know. Lindsay was just, she was just in a really tough spot and she felt embarrassed by it and now she's even more upset about the fact that she got votes listen 
there are different ways that you can handle yourself without making yourself look like the bad guy. And what Lindsay did was uncalled for. Yeah, she has a right to be upset that she got votes, but at the same time, this is a game. You can't be too hurtful about her, but hurt about it. You gotta roll with the punches and move on. That's what you gotta do. And Lindsay, not wisely, chose to like uh, lash out at them. Not like lash out, lash out, but like yelling, like yelling at them. But you know, that, that's just kind of basically what it was. So we move on over to uh, the Baron camp where we see uh, they're cooking up breakfast, which is gruel or grits. Um, I'm, not, I'm not gonna lie, I, I don't recall ever having grits in my life. Um, I don't know if I ever will because I heard that grits can kind of have like this like weird texture to it that it doesn't taste good. If it's cooked like that, I don't know. I mean, no offense to everybody who likes grits or anything, thing, but I'm not sure if grits are something that I would like to have for breakfast. Um, and the one person who is definitely um, noteworthy of that is Big Tom because he's not feeling too well. He's clearly not eating enough food because of the food that they currently have with the grits uh it says that the name of grits almost sound sounds or, or rhymes with uh, something else and i'm like ooh, i don't like where he's going with that okay let's face it i for one am not uh i for one am somebody who needs to realize that whatever substance or whatever or like uh food source you can get out there that can help you last longer and earn outdoor there's take what you can i mean i know myself i'm not a big fan of rice but if that is the main soup uh source of food that we got in order to keep a, us uh stable and to keep us going then i will eat it as much as it displeases me um but hey as long as you got that going for you and if you can keep searching for other food options out there i know for one clarence uh even though him and big tom were kind of having him falling out due to whole can of beans and can of cherries incident uh he still took time to like go with big tom and go find some food and they found this like fruit called like a pom fruit which actually if you eat some of it, it can actually cure you from a, some kind of worm infestation in your body. I didn't know that. Uh, and it was actually uh, it was actually in that Survivor trivia of the Bush Survival Guy in the last Tribal Council. And well, that's interesting. But uh, they had like a couple or like 30 minutes to like throw rocks at the tree where the, the fruit was hanging off of. Uh, Eventually, they got uh, a couple of them, knocked them down, and uh, not sure how well it tasted, but Big Tom was, was kind of like, he saw it as pointless because, you know, it took 30 minutes to just throw some rocks and get some, some fruit, which was not really, like, worth the waste of time. Okay, well, what is good a waste of time, or... Like, I, I need to explain the logic, because Clarence is trying. He's trying to help out wherever he can. I mean, I know he's trying to save himself, but at the same time, you gotta give a little credit where credit is due, in my opinion. Now, uh, next morning, or at least, I think it's the same day, uh, the Samburu tribe, uh, as you can see, the younger crowd are still doing their thing where they're not... Uh, getting up early, they're sleeping in, and the old people starting to take notice of that, and they decide, you know what, screw it, we're not going to get up early just so we can have, have your lazy butts in bed all day while we need to slave for you guys. They're not going to take that. And they then get the tree mail, and they get notice that they have to leave soon, and the younger crowd are still lying in bed and Linda she decides to go over there 
Now, Linda... All right, Linda, she is... Linda is a New England woman who is very spiritual of Mother Africa. And, you know, she's... She's... How do I put this? She... She definitely... Not boasts, but she definitely lets everybody know that, you know, if we can just let these spirit hits fill our souls, it be like happiness or something. I'm like, okay, look, don't get me wrong. I am a Christian. I know oh, that spiritually I have to be moved in order to like be guided the right way. And, uh, how do I put this? I I will definitely be spiritual in my own mind and my own heart, but I'm not gonna like. How do I put? Okay, I'm I'm just gonna stop where I am because I'm not sure if what I should say hey, is going to be offensive to some people. And don't I'm gonna be straight up. Half of what I'm saying. I don't know how to pronounce it well or say it well to you guys because I don't know if what I can say hey could offend somebody hey and I don't want to be somebody who offends someone so if who's ever watching this is feeling like he hates uh, other religions or he's only he pro-christian and he's he forcing it everybody no that's not exactly that's not what I'm doing everybody has their own religion they they believe in who they want to believe in. I have my religion. I know who I can put my faith in. And that's that's it. That's all I gotta say. But anyway. So Linda's trying to get the younger crowds out of bed. And trying to get them motivated about the challenge. And wanting to uh, team up with them. And Silas, you know, he's trying to be the leader of the younger crowd. And... Uh, try and get him amped up. Even got him one knee, almost like he's like a football player or a football coach or something. And try and get him motivated about working together more. And Linda... Linda sees that si Silas is trying to be like genuine with that. But there have been moments where Silas has been so cheesy and almost slimy -y with the, the way he's been talking to people. And trying to get him to trust them and... She's she's kind of weary about that, and she's kind of cautious the way Silas is kind of approaching this. And then, as everybody's trying to agree, Linda's all, like, hyped up and happy and to be on, like, she's on her knee or doing this, like, yoga pose going, Thank you! I am happy to be on this team! Oh. Uh. She had her hands up, up like she was being like a cheerleader. And I'm like, and she was trying to hug some people who, quite understandably, were uncomfortable by uh, Linda's uh, attitude and the way and she was going at it, almost like she was a crazy person. Even Brandon was like, there are two different sides to Linda. Uh, one was the uh, New England mom who was very caring, and then there's the other side that's almost a little bit crazy and psychotic and uh oh my goodness i feel bad for thinking about it i i remember when linda was trying to hug Lindsay, who was really like i said adamant about it and linda tried to hug her again and she was like oh did your mama never hug you and i'm like whoa okay geez that's uh that's harsh and i knew in uh I, I, a lot sometime a while ago oh Linda was like in tears about it and Linda ap apologized about saying that and uh, she she definitely felt bad and really wanted to comfort Lindsay about that comment because you know it's a, it's a really harsh thing to say to somebody and I know it's not easy and Especially being out there, being away from your family for so long. I know it's got to have a toll on you. And anybody's going to have a hard time with that. But, you know, got to 
get going and move on with it. So we get into the reward challenge. There's this big like net set up and a web, like a wall with rope, almost connected like a web with bags hanging on it. One member at a time from each tribe has to go up this wall to climb up, up and grab a bag and come back down. Then the next person goes. Once uh, each member has all the bags for her tribe, and whoever can get the last person that gets down here with their tribe's bag wins the reward. And it's it's a bit of a bonus with this reward. Whoever, the, war, the winner of this reward, the winning tribe that gets this reward uh, gets this extra food item from spices to uh, oils to uh, things to help boost it up or make it a flavor, make the grits that they have in, <coughs> in their camp flavorful almost. Like everybody could use a little bit more spice, he's every now and then, <coughs> right? Says the guy who's currently coughing right now. I swear, I have not had spicy food. <laughs> but with that said, um, of course, Zamburu, uh, they they have one extra member, so somebody had to set out. <coughs> and now the tribes are even, they could get started on the challenge. And it was it was an even race, to say the least. Like, I'm, I myself am... I'm not the most athletic type, believe me. I mean, when you cut this down, when you cut this down, um, there's a gut there. But uh, I'll, I'll still give it my all. I'll climb up that rope ladder and get that bag and try not to like break an ankle or something like that And when I'm on that net. But, uh, you know, I'm still young, I'm still active. <laughs> but um, you know who isn't though? Uh, unfortunately, Kim Johnson from us, from the Baran tribe. You know, when she got up, uh, like I said, it was close, but when Kim Johnson got up, she was trying really hard to get up that uh, net uh, ladder, but she just couldn't be able to match up again and uh, Sam Baru's young athletic uh, competitors. And that led to uh, Sam Baru winning the uh, challenge and they got the spices they got the uh the ingredients to help them flavor up the grits more and kim johnson she was really upset by this you know she knew that uh she let the tribe down with that challenge and i can understand where she's coming from you know it's not good knowing that you're the cause of uh the people, the laying the people down and losing that reward. It's not a good feeling. And I myself could get in my headspace about that. You know, there have been times where I've been so negative about doing something wrong and I would get in that headspace of like, oh great, I'm worried if I do it again, I'm going to screw it up, up one more time. But you can't, you can't get in that negative headspace. Um, otherwise, it's just going to ruin your life. I know that from experience. And it's it's not a good feeling. I know there have been times where I could be so upset at something about what's going on in my life that I can just get in my head and just really let myself down and constantly pour myself down. It's not a good feeling. And so, and then I look back at my in my high school day, and I remember the quote uh, that I got to say in my high school yearbook, uh, never let stress or, yeah, never let stress take over your life. So that was kind of a message that really want to uh, like keep myself up and keep positive always because you're never gonna get in life with a negative attitude. You're never going to make your life the best if you keep having that negative attitude in your life. And I I try my best to like keep it positive and always keep myself strong with that. And I'm, I'm still here today, you know. I'm still here ma today making my life the best as I can make it. And I hope, hope all of you can do the same. 
but back at the show now. Um, Ethan notices that Kim did feel bad about losing a challenge, and he he feels for her. But he's also glad that he's not in the position of where he could be looked at as a target because he's weak in challenges, but he's not. So that that's something good going for Ethan. Now, the next day, we cut back to San Buru. Uh, once again, the old, older crowd are up and at them, and they're trying to get the young kids to get going and get their water. So, And then Silas and Lindsay especially, they were just like, Ugh, someone hit the snooze button on Frank, you know? Like, they just want to keep sleeping in and just do nothing. But, dude... There's work to be done. Otherwise, you're going to fail miserably out here. And they, understandably, uh, yeah, something bad happened with the uh, pots that they had. So they had these clay pots, and they had to manage these pots, you know, keep them stable, make sure that they're not, like, broken or uh, in pieces. And they have to manage their fire. And they need the pots in order to boil the water. Because if you drink the water, it's not going to be safe for you. And it can really make you sick, to put it lightly. And because of the younger tribe's uh, carelessness, well, the younger, uh, the younger members' carelessness, that one of the pots broke. And Kim Powers especially took note of that and she was like uh this is a disaster what are we gonna do and i'm like uh how about you start participating more and do more work and not let the older people do it for you how about that uh it's not easy being 24 years old and realizing that uh you're kind of within that younger crowd but at least i'm different I hope I'm different. <laughs> okay. There are times where you have to realize uh, you're in that crowd. And there are times you have to realize you too make mistakes. Because you're young. You know, you're still learning. And all I can hope for when we're watching this season as I'm continually living my life is that I will not be those... Uh, I will not be he like the younger or people on Samburu. That's the only thing I could hope for. So we get into the uh, immunity challenge. So, it is a fact that North uh, Western, or it is a fact that Northwestern African tribes are, are constantly moving from one location to another in order to survive. And for the immunity challenge, they had to relocate one village from one part to another. They had to transfer this hut. Uh, they also had this like fenced area for like cattle or corral. A corral, yeah. And there's also various supplies, including a flag that represents their tribe color. First tribe to get their, their camp from one location to the other wins. And here's how it works. Two people from each tribe will act as the architects. They're responsible for reassembling the, uh, the campsite exactly as it is from when it started. The only rule is they cannot touch the, uh, the items as they're moving it. And <coughs> Kim and Kelly were the ones who were being the architects for uh, Baran, while over on Samburu, I believe it, it was T-Bird and maybe Kim Powers, if I remember right. I think that's it. Um, and then we get into the challenge. Now, Samburu foolishly decided to move the lighter stuff first before or they move on to the big uh, actual hut that they're supposed to get over there. 
while Baron mostly focused on the getting to the heavier stuff for her to take care of that and then move on to her lighter stuff. And it seemed to work out for him. And I know it was a big mistake for Sam Brewer because Lindsay, I know, was on the side of the wall of the hut as she was carrying it and putting it down, she got her face scratched. I'm like, ooh, that, that doesn't have to feel good. So they got everything has moved over there or to the other side of the challenge arena and they were getting their camp set up, but it was ultimately Baron winning in the challenge as they planned their flag down. So Baron is once again safe from tribal council. Nobody is going home from their tribe and that leaves Samburu to have to go to Tribal Council once again, so they have to vote someone out. Not a good feeling. Oh, by the way, so crazy thing happened for a Baron. So they were on their way back from getting water, but amongst their uh, traveling, they stopped because they saw something in the, uh, the, the lay of the area. And it turned out to be a Cape Buffalo. Now, they've done their studying in the, of the African bush of Survivor, and the buffalo is by far one of the most dangerous uh, animals that they could, uh, bleh. the buffalo <laughs> is one of the most dangerous animals that they could ever counter on top from the lion and uh, quite possibly he a leopard. So they were just making sure that they didn't move, making sure that they didn't do anything to trigger him from charging him. Oh, and a rhino. Rhino is another animal that could be a dangerous thing to encounter. But uh, in order to like get it to move, they did some whistling and clapping or clicking and, and trying to get it to move. Just making noises kind of and it gets it to like move it or pass by. And for the most part, it worked, you know? And if that were me in that situation, I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm following you. I'm not going to do anything stupid to entice them to try to kill me. So uh, don't, don't do anything stupid if you're in the uh, presence of a wild animal. One that could definitely kill you. So anyway, moving on to, uh, okay, I believe we're on like day 12 now with the uh the Samburu tribe and they had to go to tribal council now and it turns out it's actually Frank's birthday so Frank gets to uh just to celebrate he takes his torch and he carves the name of his wife and his two daughters Jocelyn and Sage into the uh the pole part or the uh the neck of the torch and I thought that was a nice gesture, especially coming from uh, Frank. You know, it's nice to to reminisce about your family. So uh, they're going to tribal council now, Samburu. And before they did that, Silas was trying to plead to uh, the older crowd to once again vote for Lindsay. Because right now, amongst all of them, the only person who's had votes out of all of them is Lindsay. And if they ever go to a tribal council with Baron, that if they ever go to a tie, Lindsay is one of the uh, the people who has uh, votes against them. And the older crowd, especially Teresa, were like, well, what's in it for us? They're like, nothing. Brandon answered that. And I'm like, well, I'm not like that. I mean, yeah. But Teresa was like, why should we have to do whatever you guys tell us to do? You know, we're the older ones. We should be telling you what to do. And they were like, we're not going to play to Silas's game. We're not doing whatever Silas wants and do whatever the young kids want just because they have more her numbers than us. So they, they go to tribal council and... As much as the younger crowd are like pleased that they have the majority and they, they have the power now, Jeff is pointing it out like, okay, so the older crowd are out, Linda, then Frank, then and, uh, 
Teresa, what's going to happen now? What is going to be the plan for you guys? Because clearly, when you have four younger kids going up against and six Baron, you're still going to be the lesser one that's in that factor, no matter what you do. So that's just something to think about. Um, this is where strategy definitely comes into play for Survivor. Because on one hand, you have to think about where your true alliance is. You know, who are you most tight with? But at the same time, this is a numbers game. You need to have the more numbers in order to last longer in this game. And if you're going into this, uh, let's say they did uh, get out all the older folks from Zamburu. That's still four uh, Samburu against six uh, Baran. So they still have the numbers. And they're just going to vote them out. I'm, I'm just really dumbfounded by this logic. Um, but anyway, we get into the vote. And... Instead of going the plan that Silas wanted with keeping the votes on Lindsay so that way no one else gets vote votes and they don't have to worry about it in the future, they decide, you know what? Screw you, Silas. We're going to vote for you just because uh, you're not the boss of us. So Frank, Linda, and Teresa got to vote for Silas. And unfortunately, uh, the older crowd gets knocked down a pad and win. There are four votes placed on Linda. Linda is the fourth person voted out of Survivor Africa, and she tells everyone before she leaves to play nicely, knowing that they're not going to because they're young, irresponsible old kids who don't know anything about um, a game like this or a world like this where you have to survive. Um, but anyway... So, just to catch up on you guys, we're now down to six members each on both Boron and Samburu. And the next episode, uh, I'm not going to give anything away for those of you who don't know, but it's going to be crazy once it happens. And there will definitely be a lot of uh, more scheming coming up along the way as we get further down into the season and... It's going to be crazy, and oh boy, I'm excited to tell you guys about it for the next episode. But until then, thank you guys so much for watching this uh, Survivor Savant episode. Um, I I hope that by going with this uh, new schedule that I have in mind for episodes, that maybe it will be a lot more easier for me to edit, and hopefully easier for me to improve, and who knows, maybe you guys will be more entertained by the fact that I have more episodes coming out a week, you know, three episodes a week. I think that's a cool thing to like have. So thank you guys so much for watching. And until then, I hope you guys enjoy me being outclassed, outsmarted, and outspoken with the Survivor Swan podcast. Until then, this is Nathan Newport signing out. So long, guys.